Hello, it's Markham Matorshich here from Markham 3D, and today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to use a fog effect two different ways. Now, this was a simple render I did with Eevee, and all I have is ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections on Eevee. This also works in cycles. So in method number one, we're going to come over into the passes tab or the layer properties, and I'm going to enable the mist pass. Now, when I press F12, nothing has changed, which is fine. So let's leave that. I'm going to go to layer three. So I've got layer one, layer three. From here, we go into the compositing and I've already got the rendered layers here. I've got my compositor node and my viewer node. Now that we enabled that mist past option, we've got the mist option here. So we can do some stuff. If I were to select the mist and plug that straight into the viewer and nothing's going to happen because what happened is when we rendered the image, we went to a blank render layer. So our render was on layer one. We finished on layer three. I'm just going to press F12 again just to re-render it. Now let's close it. Now we've got it. So here you can see the mist past how we can see the front blocks, but not the back pillars. So from here, what we can do is we can go into a mix node and we plop it here. I'm going to throw the image in here as well. And what we can do is we can change this to add and let's just convert this around just so it's like so. And so now we've got our colored data and our mist. However, the mist is a little bit too strong. So what we can do is go shift a search and we can put in a math node and let's plug it into here. I'm going to change add to divide and we'll set our value to five. And now we can see that the mist has been pushed back a little bit further. So we can show that by going all the way to the end over here. Um, let's change this to a higher value, 25. So we go grab this value here and then let's change that to 25. We can go 10, five, two, and you can see that that mist is just getting stronger and stronger. So let's go back to 35. So it's nice and far away. And then when we merge these two, we've got that whole range of pillars where the back pillars are fading away. Now the second method, which I find is actually a lot easier. What I'm gonna do is press shift A, let's add in a mesh, add in a cube. I'm just gonna scale this cube up. Let's go scale it on the Y axis. I'm gonna come up into shading. Okay, I'm gonna select the cube. Let's create a new material. I'm gonna delete the principal BDSF shader, shift A, search, and I'm gonna type in volume. And we want principled of volume. Let's plug that into the volume. Let's just click on rendered view just so we can see what we're looking at, which is nothing. And that's because the density is set at one. Let's change this to maybe 0.1. And then we go F12. And now you can see that we've got that density. These spots here are our light sources. And that's something you're not going to get using the mist pass. So let's just press escape. I might just go 0 0.2, uh, sorry, 0 0.02. Let's press F12 again. There we go. So that's looking really nice. And just to make it look really nice, let's just jump over to the cycles and I'm just going to press F12, let it render out. I've just got the denoiser on, but we can see that we've got our light source here. And that's something that, like I said before, we're not going to have using the mist pass. So if you found this very useful, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and keeps up to date with my content.